When most people lose fat, they also lose a lot of muscle, which is a huge problem because the dream outcome for most people isn't necessarily to just lose weight or burn fat. It's actually to improve their body composition, which essentially boils down to reducing body fat while also increasing muscle mass. And if you lose muscle every time you try to cut away some fat, you're just gonna stay stuck in a cyclical process where you take one step back for every step you move forward. So to actually ensure progress, I wanna give you guys nine rules that you should follow whenever you're trying to reduce your love handles, your belly fat, or any kind of fat without wasting precious muscle mass in the process and the first thing is to make sure that you base your caloric intake on your current body fat percentage to maximize fat loss while minimizing muscle loss this is so important because the less body fat you carry the more prone you are to muscle loss on the other hand if you have a high body fat percentage you can diet much more aggressively without risking muscle loss this is because there's more stored energy available for your body to tap into and use as fuel when you're overweight or when you have a high body fat percentage. So your body doesn't need to break down precious muscle tissue to get that fuel. So based on the scientific data, here's how I would set up your caloric deficit as a function of your body fat percentage. As you can see on the table on the screen, it shows us that if you happen to be a man with an average body fat percentage of 15 to 21%, you can reduce your calories by 20 to 30% from maintenance without risking too much muscle loss. On the other hand, if you're a man with a body fat percentage that's greater than 26%, you can literally reduce your calories by 40 to 50% without risking excessive muscle loss. The easiest way to figure out approximately what level your body fat percentage is right now would be by looking on the screen and choosing the range that looks most similar to your current body. And to easily figure out your maintenance calories, you can just Google a macro calculator or you can click the link in the description below. Just keep in mind that it's totally fine to diet less aggressively than the numbers that you see on these tables. But to avoid muscle loss, I highly recommend not exceeding the calorie deficit ranges that you see for each category. Also, since no macro calculator is perfect, you may want to keep track of how much weight you lose every week. If you lose more weight than the numbers in the maximum weekly weight loss column indicate, then that could be a sign that you're dieting too aggressively. The next super important rule to follow is to maintain your training intensity as you cut down. From the training side of things, this is by far the best thing you can do. Unfortunately, when you're in a calorie deficit, it can become harder to recover from your workouts because the calorie deficit itself triggers physiological changes that impair recovery. For example, you'll experience a reduction in testosterone and IGF-1 production along with a simultaneous increase in cortisol. All of these changes are far from ideal for muscle growth and recovery. So most people will adjust their workout to make up for their reduced energy levels and their reduced recovery capacity. The big problem is that usually people do this by reducing their training intensity. In other words, by reducing the amount of weight that they lift. And that's a huge mistake because there is a very close correlation between strength and muscle mass, which means your ability to maintain muscle while you cut is very closely related to your ability to maintain your strength levels while you cut. So even though you will most likely lose at least some strength each week as you diet, you shouldn't just willingly reduce your weight load every week because you have less energy. You should fight to maintain that same intensity throughout your entire cut, almost in the same way that you would train if you were trying to gain strength. You should only reduce the weight when you physically can't lift the weight for the intended rep range that you're going for while still maintaining good form of course. Instead of reducing intensity to match your lower energy levels, it's a better idea to reduce your rep and set volume during a cut. So for example, before your cut you might have been able to do 225 for 10 reps, but during your cut you can't do more than 6 reps. I'd rather you keep the weight at 225 and fight for those 6 reps. Of course if you keep dieting and your rep range drops to 2 or 3 reps, then you will have to drop the weight, but only drop the minimum amount of weight that you need to get your reps back above your target rep range, which in this example would be 6 to 10. Another eating strategy that you should use is calorie cycling, which is basically eating more calories on some days and fewer calories on others. So let's say that to lose fat, you need to stay under an average of 2,300 calories per day. Instead of maintaining the same deficit every single day, you could have two really low calorie days of let's say 1,400 calories, and that would allow you to have 2,660 calories on the other days while creating the same total calorie deficit at the end of the week. 
Research shows that cycling like this improves diet adherence, diet satisfaction, and weight loss compared to continuous calorie restriction. On top of that, calorie cycling may help you maintain muscle mass as you're burning fat. This is because when you lift weights, you stimulate something within your muscles known as protein synthesis, and that leads to muscle recovery and growth. So it's been shown that muscle protein synthesis is elevated by 50% four hours after heavy weight training, and 109% after 24 hours. However, after longer time lengths, like 36 hours, we find that protein synthesis rates drop to only about a 14% increase above baseline. What this all means is that your muscles are in an optimal muscle building state for about 24 hours after your workout, but after that, protein synthesis drops significantly. So you can take advantage of this with calorie cycling by eating more calories on workout days and fewer calories on the days that you rest. You'll also want to make sure that your diet contains enough fat. A lot of people make the mistake of going on a low fat diet or they just arbitrarily try to avoid fats since fats make you fat, right? Well, not exactly. It turns out that fats can not only be good for fat loss, but they're also essential for optimal hormone production. Specifically, testosterone is very negatively affected when your intake of fat falls below 20% of your total daily caloric intake. In a systematic review and meta-analysis, men were first put on a high-fat diet with 40% of the calories coming from fat. And then they were later transitioned to a low-fat diet where 20% of the calories were coming from fat. And researchers found that the low-fat diet decreased testosterone levels 10 to 15% on average. Specifically, vegetarians that were on low-fat diets were most vulnerable to testosterone losses, some experiencing up to a 26% reduction in test levels. So make sure at least 20 to 35% of your diet is made up of fats. An easy way to check if you're getting enough is by multiplying your body weight times 0.2. If you're under that amount in grams of fat per day, you may want to consider upping your fat intake. Out of all the fats, you want to try to get more omega-3s in your diet because research shows that consuming more omega-3s improves exercise performance, muscle growth, and lean body mass. Next, let's talk about cardio. You'll want to avoid doing excessive amounts of cardio because that can make maintaining muscle much more difficult during a cut. I already mentioned that maintaining your strength levels throughout a cut is one of the best things that you can do to maintain muscle mass. If you're already in an energy deficit and then you're also overdoing it with cardio, it's going to make it even harder to be fully recovered for each of your strength training workouts. This is actually something known as the interference effect and it's been shown in a meta-analysis to reduce muscle growth effect size by up to 39%. That's why many times it's better to perform low intensity cardio when you're cutting down, like brisk walking instead of running. The walking most likely won't interfere with your weight training as much as the running. It's also a known fact that cardio decreases mTOR, which is essential for muscle growth, and it increases AMPK, which is catabolic, meaning it's bad for muscle growth. So when trying to burn extra calories, it's almost always better to look closer at your diet rather than doing more and more cardio. The next important tip is to either limit the amount of alcohol you drink or avoid it altogether. This is because alcohol impairs fat loss and also leads to muscle wasting. For example, research shows that as acetate enters your blood, fat burning is highly suppressed, which causes most of the fatty acids in your blood to be stored as fat. Combine that with the fact that you're more likely to eat high fat processed foods after a few drinks. Also, if acetate isn't used for energy soon after you drink, it can be converted into fat, which is another reason why alcohol has such a high potential to make you gain fat. From a muscle maintenance perspective, alcohol is detrimental because it impairs protein synthesis. One study found that nine servings of alcohol post-workout decreased protein synthesis rates by 24%. The scientists mentioned that alcohol suppresses the anabolic or muscle building response in skeletal muscle and that could make recovery and adaptation to training much more difficult. Next, make sure that you get enough fiber and protein because doing so will help you burn fat and preserve muscle. Both protein and fiber help increase the feelings of fullness and without eating enough protein during a cut, you will absolutely lose muscle mass. So make sure that you're getting at least 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. 
Fiber is not only good for your health and body composition, but it's also highly satiating. Research shows that for every 14 extra grams of fiber that people consume, food intake tends to reduce by around 10%. This is because fiber has the unique ability of prolonging fullness by slowing down digestion. And once the food enters the large intestine, fiber begins to ferment, leading to the production of short chain fatty acids, which is a type of fat that enhances fullness. So assuming you don't have any digestive issues, it seems to be ideal to aim for at least 30 to 38 grams of fiber per day as a man and 21 to 25 grams of fiber as a woman. While that might sound like a lot, it's actually not that much compared to the amount of fiber that humans have evolved to eat. For example, scientists estimate Australian aboriginals ate between 40 to 80 grams of fiber per day, and other hunter and gatherer groups in northern parts of Mexico would consume up to 225 grams of fiber per day. So it's definitely doable to get at least 38 grams of fiber per day, especially if you're eating lots of vegetables. Now, since protein is so important, a super easy tip is to eat a high protein breakfast like eggs every day. And when I say breakfast, if you're intermittent fasting, your breakfast would literally be whenever it is that you break your fast. The evidence shows that eggs are excellent for burning fat while preventing muscle loss. One egg contains about six grams of protein and that protein is of high quality since it contains all nine of the essential amino acids, making it a complete protein source. On top of that, it's one of the world's best sources of leucine, which is the most important amino acid for muscle growth because it activates mTOR, which like we talked about, is the primary muscle building pathway in the body. Aside from benefiting muscle mass, the high protein content makes the egg also amazing for losing weight, especially when eaten for breakfast. For example, research links the regular consumption of an egg-based breakfast to increased weight loss over time. That's most likely because having eggs for breakfast raises levels of peptide YY and glucagon-like peptide 1. These are two hormones that regulate appetite and promote the feelings of fullness. Finally, last but not least, it's a good idea to try to maintain a consistent eating schedule to burn fat while retaining muscle. Research shows that being inconsistent with your eating schedule increases hunger and cortisol while impairing insulin sensitivity and the thermic effect of food, all of which can slow down fat loss. An increase in cortisol tends to have a negative effect on your belly fat, which partially explains why people with chronically elevated cortisol levels are categorized by abdominal obesity. So don't eat six meals today, three meals tomorrow, and one the day after that. Keep it consistent and do your best to spread your protein intake more evenly throughout the day. For example, even if you fast for longer than 16 hours and you only have two meals a day during your feeding window, research shows that a more even distribution of protein in each meal is better than skewing the protein intake and having one very high protein meal along with another very low protein meal. So just like with your workouts, consistency with your diet can really help. So that about wraps it up, guys. One last thing that I will say is to have realistic expectations. I know on Instagram, it looks like everyone but you is maintaining a shredded 6% body fat with full looking muscles year round all naturally, but this isn't realistic. When you cut and you do everything right, you will still lose some muscle, especially as a natural. The point is to lose the least amount possible and these tips will definitely help. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want any extra help with your diet or workout plan, I have everything from courses to recipe books to one-on-one -on -one coaching. All you have to do is click the link in the description below, or you can visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. See you guys soon.